this is a question about stress transformation. Uh, it's this question here about a thin-walled cylindrical chemical vessel. Uh, and you get certain numbers about it, and we want to know things like the principal stresses and the maximum in-plane shear stress. Um, so I've drawn it out here. Um, my drawing of thin-walled pressure vessels is not very good, I'm afraid, so I apologize for that. But um, I've marked on the key numbers. There's an internal pressure of 4.2 megapascals, a torque of 1.6 kilonewton meters. We've got the inside diameter and the outside diameter. And what's going on here is that the internal pressure creates uh, normal stresses in the walls and the torsion creates shear stresses in the walls. So we need to start by calculating those things. And of course the first thing to do is to go to the data sheet and just note um, some information from the uh, thin cylinder section and there I get that sigma L, the longitudinal stress, equals PD over 4T. Um, T is the wall thickness P is the pressure, D is a diameter. Um, the idea here is that it doesn't matter, because it's thin-walled, it shouldn't matter whether we use the inner or the outer diameter. Um, I'm going to use the inner diameter for that. Uh, no, actually, I'll use the outer diameter, because that'll give me a uh, higher stress. Um, so I'm going to say that equals 4.2 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by 0 0.088 all over 4 times 0 0.004. Uh, so T, my thickness, is 4 millimeters, which I made 0 0.004 here. And that comes to 23.1 megapascals. Remembering that stresses are measured in megapascals. So now we can go on and do the same thing for the circumferential stress. That's PD over 2T, which equals 4.2 times 10 to the 6 times 0 0.088 all over 2 times 0 0.004 and that comes to 46.2 megapascals. Okay, so that's all to do with the normal stresses which are caused by the internal pressure. Now we can go on and look at the um, shear stresses due to the torsion and for that we need the torsion equation that T over J equals tau over R and for a thin walled cylinder we've got J equals pi capital D to the 4 minus small d to the 4 all over 32 uh, that's on the data sheet as well that's pi times 0 0.088 to the 4 minus 0 0.08 to the 4 all over 32 and just putting that into a calculator that comes out to be 1.866 times 10 to the minus 6 Um, meters to the 4. And what we want to calculate here is the shear stress tau, so we get tau equals T times R all over J, which equals 1600 times, uh, we're looking for the maximum shear stress that will be on the outside wall, so this is 0 0.088 divided by 2 that's a radius is a diameter divided by 2 and that's all divided by 1.866 times 10 to the minus 6 and when I put that in I get 37.7 megapascals um, 
just moving that up so it's all in shot. Uh, so that's the first set of steps is independently you use the internal pressure to calculate the normal stresses and the torque to calculate the shear stresses. And then what we can do is to draw out a stress element. Um, and it's subject to a longitudinal stress of 23.1. Uh, all of these are going to be in megapascals here. And I'll just write it there so I don't have to mark it on every bit of the diagram. Um, a circumferential stress of 46.2 and a shear stress of 37.7 megapascals. So that's the next stage is to draw out our stress element. And that's how a kind of small square on the surface of the pressure vessel will be being stressed. Um, so now we're set up to actually answer the question, which asked first of all for the principal stresses in the wall of the vessel, then the maximum in-plane shear stress, and then the directions of the planes on which the uh, stresses act. Um, the first thing to say is there are formulae for all of these things on your data sheet. So you can just look them up. The principal stresses are sigma max and min and um, sigma x. Actually I can mark these on the diagram just to make it totally clear. This is sigma x, this is sigma y, and this is tau or tau xy as it is there. So we've got the, all the components which will tell us sigma max and min. And the reason we get two answers is because this there's this plus or minus in the middle of the formula. The second part, part B, says determine the maximum in-plane shear stress. Um, that's these values here. So tau max is the maximum in-plane shear stress. And then the direction of the plane in which these stresses act, that's theta p and theta t max. Um, but I'm just going to look quickly at a sort of visual way of understanding this, which is to think about Moore's circle. Um, Moore's circle, we're going to plot um, stress, normal stress on this axis and a negative shear stress on that axis. Um, the next thing that we want to do is to start putting some points onto our Moore's circle and we know two points um, or, or I suppose in a way we know four points. If I mark on this as 23 and this as 46 then we know that the circle goes through uh, this point, I'm going to say, and this point, 23.1 um, uh, and that's 46.2 and this is 37.7 and this is, that's minus 37.7 and that's 37.7. Um, the important thing here is just to say that the the two conditions we've got, normal stress of 23.1 and uh, shear stress of 37.7 and normal stress of 46.2 and shear stress of 37.7 both have to go on our uh, diagram. Uh, you might be worrying about why, is, why have I made this one negative and this one positive. It doesn't matter because the uh, equivalent opposite points will also be on our diagram. And what we need to do now is draw a circle through all of these points. And the important thing to notice is that the centre of the circle is going to be there. Um, and that means this length here is going to be R. So the centre of the circle is going to be the average of those two points 
uh, so it's 23.1 plus 46.2 all over 2 which is 34.65 megapascals and it's at 34.65 megapascals normal stress zero shear stress um, then we can say the um, if that's the center of the circle we can calculate this radius because we know now this triangle this side here is 46.2 minus 34.65 that's that length there and this side here we know is 37.7 and this is R so R equals the square root of 37.7 squared oh, well I'll do 46.2 minus 34.65 uh, that's 11.55 um, uh, so this becomes the square root of 11.55 squared plus 37.7 squared which equals uh, 39.43 Um, megapascals I guess are the units of the dimensions on this circle um, so I might as well just put that in um, and now what we can do we can also just mark uh, where the circle is going to cross on this axis so it's going to cross at this point here minus 39.43 that's actually I haven't drawn this graph very well but that's actually somewhere out here and it's also going to cross somewhere over here and then we draw our graph out sorry mine's turned into more of an ellipse uh, because I haven't scaled uh, my um, axes appropriately I guess if I'd made 23.1 46.2 and 37.7 all scaled to the same size that would have turned into a circle it doesn't really matter um, the point here isn't to to actually measure anything off the circle the circles just to help us visualize so what I can say is okay what's this point here this is the minimum um, normal stress right all the stresses that apply in this case apply somewhere on this circle so that's the minimum normal stress and that's the maximum normal stress and uh, we can calculate those sigma min equals uh, the center minus the radius so it's 34.65 minus 39.43 which is minus 4.78 megapascals and sigma max equals um, 34.65 plus um, 39.43 which equals 74.08 okay that's 74.1 megapascals so that's now the answer those are our principal stresses calculated that's the answer to part a Um, the maximum shear stress is this point here which is just a distance of R straight up or sorry that's the minimum shear stress technically uh, that's the maximum shear stress but nevertheless we get to tau max equals uh, R which just equals 39.43 megapascals Um, and similarly if you wanted to calculate angles from Moore's circle this is uh, defined as theta equals zero and then this angle 
is two theta um, tau max and this angle is two theta uh, theta p the, the principal plane so you can calculate those angles to be honest um, well, I mean, yeah, you can go on and do that. What I'd like to do just to finish is to go back and look at calculating all these things from the formulae as well. Uh, that's shown you Moore's, uh, Moore's circle. Sorry that my circle didn't turn out very circular. Um, and now I just want to go back and look at the formula so you see that side of things as well. So for this we say uh, um, sigma max comma min equals and these are basically formulae which calculate directly the things that we just calculated from Moore's circle so you can do it either way you can draw out Moore's circle um, and the nice thing about that is it gives you some feeling for for what's going on here and where all these slightly long formulae come from um, or you can just use the formulae directly, which is what we're doing now. Uh, so this is now the formula for the principal stresses, and I've already said sigma x equals uh, 23.1, sigma y equals 46.2, and uh, tau xy equals 37.7. So this equals one half uh, 23.1 plus 46.2 plus or minus one half the square root of uh, oh, sorry that should be squared 23.1 minus 46.2 squared plus 4 times 37.7 squared and that turns out to be 34.65 so that is basically this first part of the calculation gives us the the um, coordinate of the center of Moore's circle plus or minus um, 23.1 minus 46.2 all squared plus 4 times 37.7 squared And this second part comes out to be 39.42, which will be familiar to you as the radius of the circle. So that equals uh, the same values that we had before, pretty much uh, minus 4.78 um, megapascals minimum stress and... Um, plus 74.1 megapascals maximum stress. Um, tau max equals, and again I'm just going to get this from the formula, yeah, there's tau max and tau min on the formula but we're only asked for tau max so it's the positive value, one half square root of sigma x minus sigma y squared plus four tau xy squared and that equals that's the same as this this bracket up here so that just comes out to be 39.42 megapascals and that is the maximum um, shear stress and then the uh, final part is to say what are the uh, planes on which these things occur. So just going back to the original diagram, what we're saying is if we look in this orientation um, then an element on the surface of the cylinder is subject to both normal stresses, which are sigma x and sigma y, and shear stress. But if we looked at an element which was rotated, so if we looked at an element uh, which was um, round a uh, at that angle basically or at that angle I don't know what angle it is but at some stage as we look at different rotations of the element uh, sorry just knocked my camera um, we're going to end up seeing um, one rotation where the element is only subject to shear stress 
and one rotation where the element is only subject to normal stress. Um, and it's worth just going back and looking at the notes on um, stress transformation to make sure you're happy with all of that. But now what we want to do is find what those rotations are. And again, the formulae are on the formula sheet. So it's these two at the bottom. This theta p will tell me the angle I need to rotate through to find the principal plane, which is where there's only normal stress. And theta t tau max would tell me the angle I rotate through to find the uh, plane of maximum shear stress. So uh, finishing off tan 2 theta p equals 2 tau xy over sigma x minus sigma y, which equals um, 2 times 37.7 divided by 23.1 minus 46.2 equals, um, so I'm getting minus 3.26, which means that 2 theta p equals um, minus 72.9 degrees. And then there's one tricky thing to notice here, which is that tan repeats every 180 degrees. And we're going to be looking for two answers for these planes. Um, and so we'll want um, to include the repetition of this uh, 180 degrees later. So if I add on 180, I get 107.0 degrees. Um, which means that theta p equals thirty six point five degrees or sorry minus thirty six point five degrees or fifty three point five degrees. And those are the amounts by which we'd have to rotate that original square to f or original stress element to find um, the orientation where the shear stress is zero and there's only normal stress. Similarly, we can say tan to theta tau max equals um, sigma x minus sigma y all over 2 tau xy, and that's all negative, um, and that turns out to be... <laughs> Not point three oh six which means two theta tau max equals seventeen point zero degrees or remembering that we have to do the other one where we add on 180, it could also be 197 degrees, and that means that theta tau max, the planes where there's only shear stress, um, the angles of the planes where there's only shear stress are 8.5 degrees or 98.5 degrees. And uh, if you check, you'll find that they're 45 degrees apart from the principal planes. So just going back, the answers that we were asked for were the maximum and minimum normal stresses. Those are those answers. The maximum shear stress and the direction of the planes on which these stresses act. Well, the maximum shear stresses act on a plane uh, inclined at those angles and the sorry the maximum normal stresses act on a plane inclined at those angles and the maximum shear stresses act on a plane inclined at those angles um, so just to recap the kind of key aspects of understanding these questions about stress transformation are first of all you have to do two different calculations a normal stress calculation and a shear stress calculation so that you can draw your stress element here, which is subject to normal stresses and shear stress. Then it's up to you whether you want to draw out Moore's circle and calculate things using Moore's circle, which is sort of graphically intuitive, or simply to use the um, equations which are given to you on the formula sheet, and those will get you all of the answers you need as well. 
Um, so uh, either way is is acceptable. I think on almost all the questions I've seen in exams, they said use more circle or uh, direct calculation. Um, and that is that question complete.